One of the most obvious ways we can experience magic or sorcery in our everyday life is when we spend money, particularly coins or notes. If we go for say into a store with a one dollar bill, an English pound note or a euro note and purchase something for this amount, if a member of staff is then paid in that same denomination of currency and then spends that legal tender of one pound, one euro or one dollar somewhere else, the spending power of that piece of paper or if it's a coin has doubled automatically. Then add this by all the other people who will hold that coin or banknote on their person and then spend it. Over the course of a lifetime, from the mint to when it returns back to the mint, a single coin or a banknote will produce in terms of spending power an accumulation of its charge by a colossal percentage far 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 in excess of the number printed upon the bill or on the coin this ability to create this amount of wealth transaction and purchasing power with the single object is a classic example of magic the banknote or the coin is the same regardless of who owns it and where it finds itself from which customer towards which vendor, shopkeeper, purchaser, and so on. As long as the coin is in circulation, as long as the banknote or bill is in circulation, its ability to perform magic is obvious. It is creating something from nothing. And what gives it this power is its ability to stay in circulation, to flow as currency. In fact, the term affluence comes from the French term affluer, meaning to flow. This is one of the reasons I personally believe that even if we move towards quote unquote a cashless society, at least one form of currency will remain in circulation because this ability to move and create wealth like a snowball gathering snow rolling down a hill cannot be performed or achieved using a digital numbers. There's also another factor to this. If you pick up any coin or banknote that is currently in your pocket and examine it, you will see that it is infused with symbols. These are the sigils of statehood. Every time that banknote or coin is passed on, the member of royalty whose head is on the coin or the nation or constitution or the republic which represents the national banknote is supercharged and reinforced within the consciousness of those who use it. This is why there will never be such a thing as a completely cashless society. There will always be at least one form of coin or note in circulation that can be exchanged not because it gives people power in terms of a localized economic dynamic it's because it will continue to power almost as if it is a sigil in fact in many ways it is a sigil of statehood royalty and the economic system the imf and other vested interests are very aware of this power of the coin or the power of money that there is a magical force in the exchange of coin that has been well known ever since currency was first developed well into the BC era and even as far back as the Bronze Age all over the world around the same time from China to India to very ancient Greece. The term coin itself represents to strike something this was the implement that was used to hammer the shape, design, sigil or into the coin in order to charge it. And this comes from magic itself. Similar concepts were used in order to charge or mark the runes of the Nordic world 
or the Ohm script of the ancient world. And this concept of hammering, banging, or scratching or cutting into a surface as a magical act of charge goes right back to the Neolithic artwork of the very, very ancient world. In terms of money being a talisman, coins are infused with all kinds of magical symbols. One has to look no further than the US dollar with the all-seeing eye at the top of the pyramid. But it goes deeper than this. Pick up an English banknote or any banknote in the British Commonwealth which has the head of the Queen of England on that. She's always portrayed as being much, much younger than she is in real life. Her true age is never shown. She's always shown as being younger. And this is to infuse the idea that she will live and be much more healthier than the rest of us. And you see this time and time again, how long monarchs actually live. And it's not just exclusively done by the British monarchy. It's done by royalty all over the world. The bank mode has a certain power. It's a power that we can tap into. For example, if you have a sigil, or if you have a desire, something like you want to end the current lockdown or the COVID-19, you can write a short message compressed onto a banknote and feed it into the system. It will pass through multiples of people, maybe hundreds. And although these people may not pay attention specifically and directly towards what you've written on the banknote, it will register in their subconscious mind. This has been used by insurgency groups forever. In fact, about 20 years ago, the National Museum of Ireland had a remarkable collection of coins that had been stamped with the names of various paramilitary groups, both in the north of Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, as a means to get their name out there, to raise their consciousness and to magically charge their identity into the masses. Everyone was spending coins. Everyone would be aware of this. Ironically, if someone was to stamp the name of their paramilitary group onto a 50 pence piece, and someone was to find this, chances are they might not spend it. And they might keep it as a novelty to show their friends. And this defeats the original purpose coin or the note not being in circulation. It must flow. Money must stay in circulation for it to have its magical power. And this is often why the complexity of these designs are placed there. Not just necessarily so they can be easily copied or by fraudsters or be counterfeited in notes. Every single line, dot, marking and symbol on a piece of currency or a coin is very specifically selected and used for that reason. Likewise, if we are doing something like putting our own sigil or mark upon a banknote, look for an area within the graphic design of the banknote, a ring of stars, a circular motif, something like an arch of a building, and place your sigil within that, almost as in a sympathetic manner, to make it look as attractive as possible. Then feed it into an automatic checkout machine and put it into the system. This is a great way of spreading knowledge and a great way of spreading ideas around. It works better on banknotes than it does on coins because banknotes are less likely to be damaged by the mark put on them and that makes them difficult sometimes to put through machines and so on. Also, the novelty, as previous mentioned, if somebody sees a coin with a design hammered into it, they will keep it as a souvenir, and it loses its power as currency. It is no longer in flow. Regarding the attitude towards money, you've heard the story in the past where people say, money is the root of all evil. This is one of the greatest lies that has ever been fostered upon ordinary people. Money is the root of all greatness. Nobody has achieved anything in this world by being impoverished. Poverty really is a curse. And poverty mindset is the primary cause 
of lack of affluence in this world. For example, a family or an individual who doesn't count their money, obsess over how much they have, or penny pinch, is more likely to accumulate wealth than a family where every penny is counted, itemized shop lists are made, a budget is set up for the week that is stringently adhered to. This is the difference between having power over currency and currency having power over you. People who hoard cash, from the farmer who has several thousand euros or dollars underneath his mattress, all the way up to the billionaire who has vast amounts of cash stored away in bank accounts, are still trapped in poverty consciousness. The money is not flowing. Once the money is flowing, poverty consciousness is released. And therefore, you would have people who don't make an awful lot of money but seem to get everything because they're constantly spending. They have power over money than the money has over them. And they will often want for nothing. They may not raise up to be millionaires, but the fact that they use the term flash the cash often allows them to accumulate wealth. And by this, I mean not necessarily cash or money wealth, but material objects and the other aspects that they wish they desire will come into their person. Whereby an individual who penny pinches and obsesses over every penny they have taking careful account of everything they spend will always be trapped in poverty consciousness because the whole concept of money and currency is just that to flow to circulate it is a river of potential if you dam the river you will not generate power if you let the river flow you will generate power and if you listen to this video, regardless if you're poor, middle class or rich, your attitude towards money will determine whether it grants favors into your life or holds you in bondage. Understanding these two differences is understanding the power of magic. So the next time you pick up a currency, a dollar bill, a euro note, an English pound note, or a coin, you look at that and think of all the transactions and all the things that it has purchased as it accumulates its wealth during the circulation of its own lifetime. Then you will fully understand not only how the magic of money works, but also how magic itself works. Don't be a cheapskate, be a sorcerer. That expression we've often heard when we were young, the rich have their money because they'd hold on to it and don't spend it, is absolutely a false statement. The rich have their money because they flash the cash.